How's it going everyone? Juan Romero here from Switchwatch. Hope you're enjoying your weekends. I'm back with another review. The Count Lucanor provided to us by Merge Games. So thank you very much. Also want to welcome 600 new subscribers who have joined us in the last 10 days. A massive thank you to all of our existing guys who continue to support and watch our videos. We really appreciate it. So let's get into the Count Lucanor review. With it being Halloween, soon developers are looking to release their horror games and this is one that falls into that category. Another is Don't Knock Twice, which we've not had the pleasure of covering, but check out our good friends over at What About The Game by clicking on the link at the end of this video if you want a great review on that one. Now here you're a 10 year old boy named Hans who lives in a little house with his mother. Your father's gone to war and mum does her best to look after Hans, but she can barely put food on the table. On Hans' 10th birthday, he loses his temper because his mum has not bought him a present or made the day special for him. Hans decides he's had enough and decides to seek his own fortune. He tells his mother he's leaving. His mum, while a little upset, decides to help Hans and gives him some cheese and some coins. And off you go on your adventure and this is where you discover how little Hans knows about the world. Quite honestly, he's very naive. Honestly though, I'm disappointed at the way his mother just let him go. This game has a large focus on the story and interacting with NPCs to discover more of the story on this adventure. Many are very strange and the old lady and the pig are weird to say the least, but a highlight in this particular game. In terms of audio, when you set off on your adventure, the music consists of chirpy chip tunes and as you explore green woods, the sound effects in this game do a fantastic job of creating a brilliant atmosphere. From walking in the woods and hearing Hans' footsteps, to the rustling of the trees with the wind, to the chirping of the birds. If you've ever taken a walk through the wooded areas, then these are the type of sounds that you would hear, so it gives you a real sense that you're there. Couple that with the chip tunes that are played in the background sometimes, and then when the atmosphere changes from a dark, sinister twist, the audio does a great job of making you feel really uneasy. I think the developers have to be commended here for doing a really fantastic job. Like in any great horror movie, for example, it's the audio that builds up that tension. It's what you can't see that makes you feel so uneasy. When you walk into a room and you hear an enemy heavily breathing, it just makes you feel tense. And that's what this game is really good at. So again, really, really fantastic sound. In terms of visuals, they have a really cool retro feel to them and are pixelated. The view is top down and everything looks quite pretty from you exploring the woods to the little squirrels running around to the friendly donkey and goats. Everything is drawn really nicely and fits this type of game. The game's visuals change nicely and make you feel really uneasy when events start to turn for the worse. I did encounter slowdown though, both in handheld and in docked mode, and this game which was really disappointing especially as this does not push the power of the Switch at all. This is just poor optimization in my view, and I would expect the developer to patch this. I have spoken to other gamers who have had the same issues and others who haven't. It was especially prevalent in the wooded areas. The castle, to be honest, wasn't too bad. What I thought was really good was the use of lighting. The developers have done a great job making this place really creepy, and you having to use candles as your primary light source. Being able to light up darkened places by leaving candles around is actually superb. Gameplay is about exploring and solving puzzles. It's all very minimalistic and everything is simple to do. The controls are easy to use and moving your character around is all very simple. You will come across a number of NPCs where interaction is the key. You will see early on that items will serve specific purposes and while you may not have any clue what a plank of wood will be good for, you can bet that you'll need it later. Much like a point and click adventure, this is more or less what you get here. Most items will have a purpose and it's all about figuring out what you need to do in the specific situation to solve each part of the game. There are rooms in the castles where you'll come across puzzles and won't be able to complete them as you'll be missing 
the item. I didn't find a crazy amount of backtracking though and I found the puzzles to be all pretty logical and worked them out for myself. There is an added element here where you'll have to avoid traps and monsters and you cannot combat these monsters unlike in a Zelda game for example, you can't carry a sword or anything to kill. You are a 10 year old boy essentially and seeking adventure and all you're able to do is hide, which you know is true to form. This part of the game is what I probably had the biggest issue with though, it tries to combine an action adventure game with a point and click game but the character moves super slowly and it borders on frustrating. When you eventually get to the castle you'll need to figure out the name of a blue floating creature in order to inherit the Count Lucanor's fortune. It's all interesting enough and gives you the purpose and motivation to figure it out. You will meet some really quirky and weird characters in your adventure and part of the fun is finding out more about each one. They are all in this castle garden and all seem to have something to hide and ulterior motives so you can't trust anyone. Problem is Hans is so naive and not very streetwise. Some of these characters will hand you coloured keys which will correspond to certain doors in the castle by matching the key to the banner outside the door. You will then have to figure out the puzzle to open chests and acquire letters to put towards finding out the name of this creature you meet early on. In order to save your game you will need to speak to the raven at the castle garden which is handily placed in the middle of the castle. You will need to chuck a coin into the fountain each time you want to save your game so make sure you spend your cash wisely on saves. The raven is there to save your soul so make sure you do this because you can be taken out by a goat or a frustrating trap at any time. The flame room is where I died the most in the game and I'll be happy to see the back of that room forever. As I didn't save I lost an hour progress, truly frustrating. The driving force behind this game is figuring out the puzzles and story, the enemies are just there to slow you down, as hands you can hide under tables and behind curtains and you have to then wait till the enemy goes off on its merry way. This mechanic, much more simplified version of Alien Isolation, although here you're not going to be scared out of your wits. As you pick up more letters from beating each room in the castle, it becomes more filled up with enemies and your movement becomes more difficult. It's essential then that you use your candles wisely and that's all I'll say. The game is currently $13.49 or £10.79 and at this price it's in the ballpark. Once it goes back up to its original price though I think it's a little on the expensive side. There are five endings in this game so it does offer some replayability but one playthrough for me was enough. The pace is just on the really slow side in order for me to invest in it again. It took me about three hours to complete but it will take you around double that if you want to find all of the alternate endings. In terms of my verdict there is a decent little creepy game here and one I could see many of you enjoying if you had an evening where you wanted a much slower pace of game with a visual and audio treat in terms of the atmosphere created. The slowdown for me slightly spoiled the experience and, and these types of games technical issues should not get past quality control in my opinion, it's just not good enough. The game is slow paced enough without frame rates dropping to quite frankly ridiculous lows. The character for me moves too slowly and the game would have benefited from implementing a run button for the main character. I understand the developer wanted to create atmosphere and in that they have succeeded, but in doing so, for me at least, everything just felt like it took too long. If you want to play through a second time then maybe unlocking a run ability would be a good compromise. If you want a chance of technical issues and don't mind a really slow pace of game then you'll get a game here which has a decent quirky little story, some quite challenging puzzles to complete and is overall a decent little adventure game with some interesting characters to meet. A respectable 6 out of 10 which would have been easier to recommend had it not been for the technical issues. My name is Juan Romero from Switchwatch and if you enjoyed this video please hit that thumbs up button, if you're a new watcher consider subscribing and leave me a comment down below let me know your thoughts on this game or any other Nintendo Switch game. You know what I'm going to say guys, I'll see you on the next one.